Okay, hi. So I've got Jonathan here, and uh, he's got the whole table set up for us out here to do some seedlings. It's April 1st, and wow, look at this, honey. What you got going on? How are you, by the way? I'm fabulous. <laughs> Things are doing this. Okay, so we're out here on our sun porch. Uh, we'll take a quick look. The pond is still not frozen. Yay! Um, it's pretty muddy out in our yard these days, um, but, you know, that's to be expected. And we've got all these gorgeous uh, rosemaries and um, geraniums. And we have our cat, Pip, who's outside the door. Hello, Pip. He wants to come in. He'll start climbing the, um, <laughs> the screen here soon. So anyway, okay. So if you're interested in doing some plantings, um, you don't need fancy stuff. As you can see, we just pulled out some little solo cups, which I like because, um, you know, you can use them year after year. Both Jonathan and I were saying that the um, compostable, the kind that the like, what is, what is it made of? The kind that you buy that's supposed to break down. Uh, I think they call them peat pots. Peat pots, yeah. I I find they don't ever break down enough in the soil, um, so I don't like to use those. But Jonathan um, poked holes in the bottom. I don't know if you can see. Not in that one. I didn't oh, poke okay. a hole. Okay. <laughs> There's not a hole in that one. Okay, so we poked a hole in the bottom of the solo cup so you can see it, so that they will drain. And then he had a few of these. These are plastic and they come with holes in them. He had some of those out in the barn already. Yeah, we, we <clears throat> reuse a lot that we buy seedlings in and so on. Yeah, so we've bought seedlings in those and just uh, we re, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what seeds have you got for us today? You wanna step back and we can show. Yep, uh, so we've got four different kinds of seeds that we're going to plant today. Uh, there are certain things like root vegetables that we would not bother to plant in pots. Also beans, because they grow so fast, you wouldn't want to have to transplant them. Okay. Um, but tomatoes. Um, cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. We've got some regular larger beefsteak type tomatoes. Okay. Um, pumpkins. This is something new we're doing this year. It's a Musque de Provence. It's a, it's a eating pumpkin that they grow in uh, the south of France and in Italy and so on. And uh, we like zucchinis both because we like the fruit, but we also like to cook the zucchini blossoms. Yeah, I think we need to grow summer. more zucchini so that we don't feel guilty stuffing the blossoms. You know, we kind of pilfer out half of the um, half of the blossoms worth of stuff to fill them and fry them. <laughs> so then, if you use all the blossoms, you don't get any zucchinis, right? Although they have male and female blossoms, and the trick Ooh. is to only cook the male blossoms, which aren't going to turn into fruit. You can kind of tell when you look at them, but that's probably a story for another day. Okay, so we are starting four seedlings, and none of these are flowers. We're just doing vegetables, but a lot of people start flowers early as well. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so how are you doing like yep. four, 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 and four? Yeah, I thought we'd start with that. We'll probably fill some more later, but um, sometimes the seed packets don't have a huge number of them, so I was gonna try to keep them separate, and we'll find a way to mark them. So this is the... Uh, Zucchini? This is the zucchini. Let's see what so, those seeds look like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. They look a lot like zucchini seeds. They do. They look like pumpkin seeds yeah. sort of too. So how many are you putting in each one? I'm putting in two. Um, and you, what you're trying to do is balance the desire to make sure each pot has something that germinates. And we're just kind of sticking them just below the surface here. Okay. And you're giving them a little space so that if they do both germinate... You can separate the roots? No, we'll probably pinch one off. It's very tempting to try to, you know, save every seedling that germinates. But what we really want to do is end up with good, big, healthy Okay, seedlings. so your point to pinch one off. If they both germinate, both seeds, yep, we, let them we grow would for a little... actually euthanize one of them. Yep, we'll let them okay. grow, grow for a little <laughs> bit and see Sorry, which one seed. appears to have the better form and uh, vigor, and then we'll pinch off the other one so that the one that's growing in there has the benefit of the whole All pot right. for yeah, its so system. Yeah, so they have a better growing... So here are the... Uh, pumpkin, okay. And the, you said that you called this an eating pumpkin. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, some pumpkins As opposed are, to like a decorative sort of seasonal, you might <clears throat> carve it for Halloween type pumpkin. Yeah, like so many things, <clears throat> they're specially grown breeds that have been kind of held on to over the years. Um, you know, if you want to grow one for jack-o'-lanterns, it may be uh, something that tends to grow large when the quality of the flesh may not be as good. There are pie pumpkins as well. Right. So pumpkins and zucchinis both spread out. So once we've got these seedlings, 
they would need a lot of space to grow. Yeah, <clears throat> we don't think a lot of like eating in this area in our culture of eating pumpkins uh, like we would a squash, um, but they're. I do. I like pumpkin. It's one of my favorites, actually. Yeah. So okay. here are the regular tomato seeds. You can see Ooh, those are tiny. Tiny. So really, we'll probably take a few on each. Two or even three of these. We'll go for two, I think. And just kind of get them down there in the dirt. Yeah. Okay. I'm just pinch them in just ever so slightly. Okay. Great. Um, and so tomatoes, we had tremendous success on the front of the house. I um, we have a little, uh, what's it called? It grows that you have the um, goes up the trellis on the front of the house. Uh, there By was the a clematis or clematis, depending on. Yeah, well, there's a flower, uh, the clematis, um, that Jonathan used to grow on a trellis up the front of the house, and it just never really did very well because the soil is very dry and sandy um, up against the house. So last summer, um, I got a wild hare, and I put in one grape tomato plant that I bought at a farmer's market. Um, it was probably four inches tall, and I dropped it in front of the trellis, and um, just kept it, you know, mostly watered, but it turns out that's a fairly wet spot, even though it's got sort of dry, sandy soil. And because it's southern facing and up against the house, it grew 12 feet tall. <laughs> it was amazing. It was like the perfect environment for growing um, some grape tomatoes, and they went until November. So yeah, we had it's kind of a little microclimate in there where it, it's it enclosed really was. and against it was the amazing. house and kept yeah. it from freezing. So it grew for a really, really long time. We had beautiful grape tomatoes. And if you have a spot like that, I, I mention that because it's worth thinking about trying some sunny spots a little bit, you know, you don't have to have a garden to grow some plants. Um, and mine was just stuck in the dirt at the front of the house up against the wall and it loved the trellis that was right there. Uh, and anyone could do that, so that's our point. You don't need a big garden to grow something. You can do these in pots. Tomatoes in particular, cherry tomatoes, love pots, um, and you can stake them really high. Um, you can get branches if you need it to tie them off to. Um, and kind of to Jonathan's point regarding pinching off the plants so that others grow well, tomatoes have a tendency to get kind of leggy. Um, and so I rein them in. Um, I don't let my tomatoes get super, super leggy out in the garden. And I find that same as a grapevine, if you cut your vines back and your tomato plants back, you get better tomatoes because there's not so much competition. Yeah, so. you tend to get fewer, larger, better ones. Right. So anyway, okay. So you just planted um, 16 little cups full of seeds. And we will check back on these um, periodically over the next several weeks and see what comes up. Another one that kids almost always do in school is, and we could do, maybe tomorrow we'll plant some off camera, is like some sunflowers. Those are a great one to start early. Yep, do sunflowers. Uh, you know, it might be fun is to do, a, you know, one of the ones that's popular with kids is um, beans, like string beans, um, because they uh, nearly always germinate and they are very visible very quickly. So right. maybe we'll do one in a bigger pot or something like that just right. for giggles. Okay, all right. So that's our seedlings show at uh, for April 1st, and I hope that you'll try and plant something at home too. It's a nice time to try and grow stuff from home as we pass the hours. Uh, it's really gratifying to plant things and watch them grow. So anyway, give it a shot. We'll see you soon. Bye.